Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation, with another interesting article here from mining.com. This comes to us from another subscriber in the community. He said, it's happening. Barrick makes a hostile $17.8 billion bid for new mines. This could be pretty big news in the world of gold mining. Barrick, such a large, he'd already had uh, acquired another company. Barrett's Gold from Canada, the world's second largest bullion producer, is going hostile in its bid to acquire U.S. rival Newmont Mining and create a mega gold corporation with a $17.8 billion all-share offer. The move, announced before markets opened on Monday, increases the potential for a three-way fight among some of the world's largest gold miners and comes after Newmont's chief executive, Gary Goldberg, interesting name for a gold mining company, qualified the reproach as a desperate and bizarre move by Barrick. If successful, the bid will create the world's largest gold company with a value of around $42 billion at current market prices. That gold mammoth would hold assets in almost every continent, including Australia, Africa, the U.S., and Latin America. The Toronto-based miner is offering 2.5694 shares for each new mod share, giving investors of the U.S. company a 44.1% of the combined entity. The deal, Barrick said, it's far superior to Newmont's $10 billion offer to buy Gold Corp, unveiled in January and still in the works. In a letter to shareholders, Chief Executive Mark Abristo said acquiring Newmont would create up to $7 billion in synergies, mainly through cost savings due to the overlap of operations in Nevada, where both companies have massive mines and exploration projects. Considered globally, the merger represents a radical and long overdue restructuring of the gold industry and a transformative shift from the short-term survival tactics to the long-term creation of sustainable value, Bristow says. Also means they've got no competition. Newmont, however, said Monday that Barrick's proposed combination ignored risk and overstated rewards. The companies already own in Nevada the largest U.S. gold and silver producing state, Turquoise Ridge Mine. I did a video about that earlier. With, in a 75%, 25% partnership. And Newmont alone has 19 mines adjacent to Barrick's own operations. There is no other transaction in our industry that can create better value for shareholders and other stakeholders in a business combination between Newmont and Barrick. John Thornton, Barrick's executive chairman, wrote to Newmont's board. The market reaction to date to your Gold Corp transaction suggests that investors do not endorse your rationale. And uh, Barrick's offer actually came in below where Newmont's shares closed on Friday. So there's their shares and there's their offer there. You can see that um, it came in below that. Newmont replied by saying that any Nevada synergy could be more efficiently realized through a joint venture between the companies without exposing Newmont shareholders to Barrick's riskier portfolio, integration risk, and transaction cost. If it noted that the company has consistently communicated to Barrick its willingness to explore value-generating opportunities for their Nevada assets. A deal between the two largest bullion miners would likely thwart Newmont's intended acquisition of Gold Corp leaving the, Ver uh, the Vancouver-based company stranded or back in play amid a wave of consolidation in the gold sector. That's crazy. These companies may not be viable or stranded. That's, that's kind of sad in a way. It would also bring into question Barrick's ability to integrate another miner as the company just uh, completed the acquisition of Rand Gold. The potential mega fusion would follow years of relatively sluggish gold prices, and future stock in a range between $1,000 and $1,400 per ounce since 2013. But the precious metal seems to be on a way up, with prices increasing about 11% since October. Barrick and Newmont have held merger talks every decade or so for almost 30 years, with the last one blowing at the 11th hour in 2014. The news comes as the mining industry is still recovering investors' trust following a stretch of ill-timed and badly chosen expansions and acquisitions that sent billions of dollars down the drain. Barrick itself was responsible for one of those. Um, the acquisition of Equinox uh, Minerals in 2011, which Thornton since qualified 
as if not the worst, one of the five worst acquisitions in history. Shares in both Newmont and Barrick were largely unchanged in early trade. And you know, the thing about is typically when you have a bigger corporation, they swallow up these other corporations. Typically, they become bureaucratic and less efficient. And uh, also makes you wonder if they can hide things better, especially when they charge, you know, and they, you know, about all in mining costs. In some ways, it might seem plausible that they could have more efficient processes when mining that can make, uh, um, you know, profits go up and, and uh, pr spot prices, you know, not being affected as much in the long term or affect us, those people that actually acquire the, the products of the end users here. But it's really, really strange that uh, all of this is fumbling around here between these. And, and it does make me a little bit nervous to have what would essentially be one huge gold mine operation for the whole world, uh, the largest, and it may be difficult to compete. But, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting because I think there's going to be demand for more gold as the price goes up. More and more people are going to want it. And uh, they may be able to provide that supply. But at what cost? And um, But nonetheless, I don't know how the laws work internationally on this type of matter. And I'd like to see what you guys think about this particular situation. Is this something that worries you? You know, is it going to affect our prices? I don't know. may not for quite a while, but if they're the only dog in town, who knows what could happen, or the biggest dog in town, larger than any other gold mining company. It just depends how things work out. There's only so many places you can mine gold, and this essentially barrack would have all of the biggest mines. Um, you know, this around all the continents sounds like it would hold assets in almost every continent: Australia, Africa, the U.S., and Latin America. So it'll be interesting to see how this thing plays out, and um, but also what they can hide in the process. So, what do you think about this news? Um, do you think it's going to have an effect on the markets? Do you think it's going to have an effect on on gold prices? Certainly, I think their gold mining stock, even though it's unchanged now, I think will dramatically change one way or the other if the acquisition is made. Perhaps more people will have confidence in their processes. Maybe they'll make it more efficient, which may be good news in the, in the uh, short term. But typically, do things get bureaucratic as time goes on? And if that happens... You know, there may be some sloppiness in the mining or how they deal with uh, um, the gold and, and the processes there. So post your thoughts below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude, y'all, for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.